call it poetry that touches the heart through personal experiences and observation. Five books later, Dolores Dahl's a steadily gaining a reputation for inspirational and personal poetry. Author Dolores Dahl is with me now. Welcome to the show. It's great to be here. Um, the, uh, the comment was a statement, your own personal statement, I didn't choose to be a writer, it chose me. That's true. Yeah. I've never wanted to be a writer, I've never taken a class. This happened about 15 years ago, Jamie. Um, I had a, I woke up in the night with this poem running through my mind, and I, uh, I got up and wrote it down, figuring it was just a one-time experience, but it has continued to this day. The poetry just flows. In fact, when I try to write with my intellect, without mm -hmm. this flow, I just don't get anything. I'll put words down on paper, but it's of nothing of any value. It, it comes from inside. It's, right. it's not it so much a cerebral... Uh, no, I call it... I, I refer to it as the silence within me. Capital mm -hmm. S on the silence. Growing up, did you have any inclination that you wanted no, to be a writer? No, nothing, ever. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, it's exciting and it's such a surprise to me, but I really, I really appreciate it. Uh, uh, describe for me, Dolores, the, the writing experience for yourself. Is it something that just comes on a regular basis, or, or is it intermittent? Uh, it's with me all the time, but I will go for long intervals and not, not write at all, but... Um, but when I do get this little nudge inside, it's, uh, I go to the pad and pen, and mm -hmm. generally the first line is uh, with me. By the time I sit down, I have the sentence in my mind, and it just flows. Mm -hmm. How do you describe your, your poetry? Well, the inspirational, thoughtful, um, that type of mm -hmm. work. Yeah, it's, uh, you, you published five books now, the words. Each one... Uh, as I was mentioning earlier, um, it certainly has a, a personal theme through it, but they all deal with the very different topics. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one, uh, for example, was uh, very, coming out of a very emotional experience for yourself, the loss of your, of your husband. husband. Right. After um, many years of marriage, I lost my husband 10 years ago in an airplane crash. Mm -hmm. And I was at the airport when it happened. So it was really traumatic for me. And uh, I did a lot of writing at that time just to get myself through it. Yeah. A lot of, um, I guess some people call it journaling, but, but further on down the road I decided to share that with the readers with some of it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I have in my book. Sure. And it's touched a lot of lives already. They've, I've had people come up to me. One lady told me that uh, she lost her husband two years ago. Mm -hmm. And she hadn't been able to shed a tear. And uh, after reading my book, she said, it was like the dam broke, it's just a flood of tears. And uh, she had a release, and she could go on. That's one example. Uh, certainly, you, you go to, I, I guess, use different tactics for inspiration. Uh, one of the books is based on a 24-hour experience, in fact, out on the Oregon coast. Right, and I didn't intend to write a book. I always bring my pad and pen along wherever I go. And this particular time, I wanted to spend um, an overnight stay at the coast by myself. It's just something I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And um, it just flowed. In fact, it started flowing even before I got there. I even wrote in the car, and I don't recommend this to anyone else. Yeah. There's a lot of scribbling. And it just, it, it just went on all day, all through the night. Well, I went to bed later in the evening, but... In the morning, the flow was still there, and when I got home, I had written a book. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's just wonderful. It's exciting to me. I feel uh, that they're definitely meant to be shared. That's, you know, I've really come to that conclusion a long, long time ago. That's so I'm doing the best I can. Um, now, you brought uh, with you, we, we have a couple of books, a selection that you, you'd like to read to the audience today. Uh, the first one is from the first book, Suddenly Alone. Uh, could you describe, a, I guess, a bit of a mm -hmm. preliminary to the book? Okay, you know, um, you feel so many emotions when you lose a loved one. In fact, uh, there are stages. You go through disbelief, denial, anger, uh, guilt, um, and finally you come to acceptance and peace. But you do have anger, and it's irrational. 
And I wrote a piece, and I titled it Irrational Anger. Mm -hmm. I'd like to read that one. You turned your back and walked away into death's embrace. How dare you leave? It wasn't time. You owed us things that grandpa's bring, like laughter, rise, so many things. And kids gave dads. You took that too. And you took part of me with you. For now I'm only half, just photographs and memories. That's all you left. And are you pleased? The great escape went off as planned. My outstretched hand, the open palm, my gift to you. And yet the bird just up and flew, too far away to air return. How dare you leave? It's not your turn. So that it was irrational, but still you feel that. It's certainly you just don't know where to strike out or you yeah. just have it. Yeah. But that helped me. That that helped me to release it in the writing. Mm -hmm. We have another one here. Uh, certainly, I guess on a different emotional note, it's from the book entitled "The Pearl Within the Shell." Uh, I believe the poem's called "The First Thing." Mm -hmm. Well, this is just a little short poem, but it says so much. The first thing: love myself before I can another. Love myself before I love my brother. Love myself. Is this what I must do if I would love another through and through? I think that's so much. Mm -hmm. you, uh, you're, you're now based down in Fairfax, Manitoba, mm -hmm. is that right? Mm -hmm. But uh, originally an American, in fact, for most of your life. Right, I came from Oregon. I lived there for 25 years. Mm -hmm. um, but I was born and raised in International Falls, Minnesota which is just a day's drive from here. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm familiar with the weather here, but not the wind. That was a surprise. Right. <laughs> the, the books have been published uh, for a while now. Uh, you are, in fact, your own publisher. Could you briefly describe mm -hmm. what that's like, going out to, into the world of publishing? Right. Well, when, when all this began, I knew I, I wanted to share them, and I didn't know how. And, of course, the first thing everyone does is you send your manuscript to publishers. Uh -huh. And I did that. Everyone does that. And of course, they all came back with rejection slips because I was totally an unknown and, you know, they just don't take on an unknown right. personality. So so I went ahead the best I could and asked a few questions and inquired and I found someone to do the graphics and the design um, and someone to do the printing and binding and all, all that needs to be done, mm -hmm. sort of co-signment. And um, and that's how I did it. And okay. and uh, of course I I, I pay for for this myself. And uh, I do one book at a time. And uh, generally, when I make enough from the one book, I'll go on to the other book. Mm -hmm. The books are available at uh, Candlewoods here in town, the Lighthouse, mm -hmm. and Reader's Choice. Right. Uh, author Dolores Dahl. Thanks for coming, Dad. Oh, you're welcome. It's a pleasure. Uh, that's our program for today. Thank you for joining us. Stay tuned to All My Children. It's coming up next. See you tomorrow.